hope everyone's having a great week so far. I apologize for not doing a prep talk video for the last two lessons, but we are starting a new unit this week. It's called Connected, My Life in the Church, and it's written by Tom Rayner. He is the president and CEO of Lifeway, and he's also written a book. It's a great companion uh, to this study. It's called I Am a Church Member, and so I know several of our uh, church members actually have that book because our children's minister, Amanda, gave that out as uh, a thank you gift to our Awana workers in the spring. So if you have a chance to read that, it would be a great uh, help as you uh, prepare for these lessons. It is 6.30. Actually, it's a little bit later now. It's about almost 7 o'clock on my day off. Uh, that's usually how it works on Fridays. It's usually uh, the day that I take off during the week. And that's usually the day I wake up the earliest. So I've been up for quite a while. Uh, and I actually enjoy my time alone. Uh, it gives me a chance to drink a little coffee and just kind of recharge my batteries uh, for the day. That's just the kind of person I am. And that's, uh, that's okay. You know, the fact that it said that uh, Jesus took that time to, to get alone and get by himself. And uh, even though I enjoy uh, that time and actually cherish that time just to be by myself for an hour or two, uh, God actually has created us to be in community and to be connected. And that's what we're going to be looking at for the next six weeks. Probably the best example of how we need to be connected uh, is, is when Paul talks about spiritual gifts and how God has gifted us with different gifts. And these gifts aren't for us, but they're to help other people and to help the church. So it's kind of a built-in, we are reliant upon each other uh, and we're connected. So for the next six weeks, our studies on the topic of being connected are all going to be out of the book of Ephesians. And so when you're going into the first lesson, that's a great time to talk about the, uh, uh, the background of the book, uh, to introduce it, take five minutes or so, and, and tell a little bit about Paul, where he was, who he was writing to, uh, the church at Ephesus, what do we know about that. And so you just take a few minutes and, and introduce those uh, topics. Now, as we look at this week's lesson is Connected, My Life in Christ, we're going to look at just six verses. It's out of Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to be looking at verses 17 through 22. And there's just a couple of our areas that I would like to point out and emphasize uh, today. The first one comes out of verse 18. And let me read that. For through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. Access to the Father, that is something that we definitely take for granted, don't we? Uh, we're talking about the, the creator of the universe here. And we can come directly to him without having to go through anybody else. Uh, church members don't have to go through a staff member uh, to get to God or, or anything like that. We have, as Christians, have direct access uh, to God. And you know, despite your political leanings, it would probably be neat to have an audience with the president, whoever that president is. Uh, and it just doesn't happen in, uh, in a normal person's life. But as Christians, we can go directly to God. And my goodness, we certainly don't take advantage of that situation near as often as we should, do we? The second thing I want to point out is uh, the analogy of the church that's listed here. In fact, let me read verses 20 through 22. Uh, just at the end of verse 19, he talks about being members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his Spirit. So in these verses, we see that Christ is not only the cornerstone, but he's also what holds the building together. Uh, I guess kind of like a mortar, if you want to think of that. You know, if you stack up bricks, they will, uh, you can make a pretty tall wall, but it, what makes it stronger is that mortar that comes between it and helps hold those bricks together. I used to think of church and Christians working together kind of like a brick wall. And as you look at this brick wall, you see um, it's probably pretty strong. It's got the mortar between it. 
But I really think a better picture of the church is something like this stone wall where people are different shapes and sizes and colors and have different gifts, but yet somehow uh, God fits them together and there's still that mortar that comes between them that helps hold them together. So as you're putting your final touches on the lesson this week, uh, just think of some questions that come out of the text. That's When you're preparing for Sunday school, that's probably the one of the main things you need to do is just read the text over and over and over and question it. What would be some questions that somebody would have as they read this, uh, as they read this particular passage? Also think about this. What can your class do to better create a sense of community? Because that's what our lessons are going to be on in the next six weeks. And so as you go through the lessons, uh, try to determine what can you as a teacher and then as a class as well, what can y'all do to better create a sense of community in your class? That's all I've got for now. I hope you have a great week, and I hope to see you Sunday. Bye.